Hi, I'm Wesley. This is Teresa. We didn't know anything was wrong with Brooke to start with. All the way through the pregnancy, we thought everything would be fine. And then around her 12th birth, um, 12th month. month, just before her birthday, we kind of noticed a few signs that were leaning towards autism. The diagnosis was probably the longest part. We kind of knew from about 12 months, but then she got diagnosed just before her fourth birthday, so three years the diagnosis took, which is pretty quick for autism because some people go years and years and years. As soon as we found out about Brooke, it was your whole life has to stop and it's all about Brooke then. So everything we did then revolved around Brooke and helping her. You don't really, you, you get help, um, as such, you can get a specialist health visitor you can get obviously put into a special school if you want think that they need it. I decided for Brooke to go to a special school just because the support in the special schools are way more funded, a lot more obviously than mainstream. Um, you can get a speech and language therapist, occupational therapist, like I said, a health, specialist health visitor. Um, you also get to see your health visitor a lot more than if obviously you have a normal child. Um, so they do help, um, but obviously the waiting list is huge, so you can go weeks without seeing them. You can contact them, but obviously only a phone call to get an actual appointment to speak to them or to see them which is weeks. The most heartbreaking thing ever. Literally, to know that there's something wrong with your child and their future and all the little things you think you're going to be doing when your child is older, even like grandkids and things like that. And then it's just heartbreaking to know that she hasn't done anything wrong, yet she has this thing that you can't cure. There's it's no a cure. lifelong thing that she doesn't deserve but there's nothing we can do to change it we just wanted to live as most normal life as possible which yeah. to be honest she does because she doesn't know she has it so in her own world if someone is looking at her or making fun of her she doesn't even notice which is yeah. good she doesn't notice negativity she doesn't notice sarcasm she doesn't notice any of it does she which is good because obviously for me the most heartbreaking thing is if someone was to kind of say something to her or be nasty to her and she has to deal with it whereas at the moment she's oblivious to it as well which is amazing isn't it so as long as we can keep it like that then obviously life will be a lot easier for us You definitely need to get a diagnosis as early as possible. Don't take all this waiting around business. You really need to be on these people because sometimes you'll see one appointment, then they'll say, yeah, come and see us in another six months. Come and see us next year. Come and see us in another six months. It's but hard to get a that diagnosis. That way it drags and drags. You really need to be on these people. So diagnosis, that's the first the main thing you need because that's when you will get the extra help you need or after yeah. that just treat them like you would a normal child don't make yourself like distant from them because only be distant from them when they want to be distant from them I would say. yeah you can tell they you can need, need your own they child. need their time alone but don't distance yourself because that's not nice they're still normal children
the future for Brooke is pretty much still undecided. In her school, they say if she carries on the way she's going, she could lead a pretty normal life. To us, we probably don't see that because we look after her so much that we probably <laughs> be so hesitant for her to actually be on her own when she's in when she's older in the future and stuff. So future with an autistic child you never know you just keep it as positive as you yeah. can and i don't really tend to look at the future i look at the future in the sense of where she'll live um so obviously my plan is to obviously get a bigger house so she can have kind of like mm. her own little house within our house and um, but job wise and the and um, what she's going to actually do um is very uncertain depending on i think the next few years when she goes to high school will obviously dictate and determine what she will do. So we'll just do what we can to make sure that her life is as comfortable as possible.